Hi, uh, welcome to the humor and art uh, lecture. So this is to be done after reading chapter four. So chapter four deals a lot of paradox and art, and um, this is kind of really the stuff that I really enjoy. So I'm really <coughs> glad to talk about it. Uh, as I was saying, so this is um, just one of my favorite things with art. I feel like um, humor is a great communicator. Um, it allows people to enter work differently. So there's going to be some links in here that you're going to want to check out. I will also post them within Canvas as well. So first we're going to talk about paradox of art because I feel like um, it's part of a lot of humor and it's also within the textbook. So a paradox is a statement or situation with seemingly contradictory or incompatible components. So basically when something feels like it doesn't fit or is kind of opposite, but it has some uh, nugget of truth, um, that's kind of a paradox. Um, sometimes they have hidden or unexpected truths. There is an R21 link and I will post that for you for artists that deal with paradox. Um, so there's a disconnect in logical forces um, when you have a paradox. So it talks about literary things that are it's going to help with the studio actions. Um, but when something is illogical or these logical forces that are kind of not working, um, the viewer or reader has to figure out, oh, these things don't go together. Why does this not work? it does work and it it allows us to think about something in a different approach that uh, that definitely causes different parts of the brain to work so um, if you read Animal Farm in high school which is a great great book uh, highly recommend if you haven't read it um, all animals are equal but some animals are more equal than others and it's part of their cardinal roles so the statement doesn't make sense. Like, how can all animals be equal, but some are more equal, but they're all animals. Um, but it points out a truth, even if the statements contradict each other. And it's actually a uh, hidden message. So the statement, uh, it's, it's an allegory, the book, and I, I, re I recommend it. Um, so images that are paradoxical. So MC Asher does a lot of things that they appear truths, and a lot of times... Um, visual image is sort of, it's a record, it's something that's conveying, but when it's sometimes conveyed as truth and it's illogical and it, it, it opens your brain up in different ways. So some of the statements that are paradoxical or funniest people are the saddest. It's weird not to be weird. I know one thing, I know nothing. The sweeter a person is, the more savage they are, etc., etc. So these are paradoxical statements that um, are literary things. Now, maybe you can think about how to visually illustrate these. So one of our studio actions is um, oxy, so you choose between an oxymoron and a pun. We'll, talk, we'll dive a little deeper in that. But an oxymoron is a figure of speech in which two words of opposing meanings are used together intentionally for effect. It causes the reader to think about the meaning instead of just stating it. It's a paradox with a point. So and then there's also a pun, which is a joke exploiting two different possible meanings of a word or the fact the words may sound alike or have different meanings. Also, there could be visual puns. So visual puns think something that um, you think about the function of something as well. Um, so my computer's got a Miley virus. It stopped working is one of the uh, pun winners of the pun. So people like puns, be, um, and they also can be threatening because uh, they reveal how nothing really does have a meaning and uh, you know they're, they're so obvious but yet so subtle and that's why people like puns 
and people also hate puns. Um, so we'll be approach we'll be exploring oxymorons or visual puns within this set. So I'm talking about something that's humor, humor and art. And um, before we can really talk about how artists use humor, we need to talk about humor itself as a concept. So um, these are two, the two YouTube links are to um, TED Talks about humor, and I will link them. I highly recommend them. Um, they might inspire you to think about how humor and art work together. But basically, humor, when you layer um, something with humor, it's an entrance point. So I keep talking about, like, how do you get your entrance point? How do people step into the work? And then you pull them in with something else. So when something is funny, people go, huh, that's funny, like, oh, it's a joke. But it's usually over um, something that's sad. So it can destabilize the situation in a split second, draw the viewer in, or draw something else out. So humor is a way to talk about something. Sometimes really deep things within um, something funny. So artists use humor. So in these images, we want to think by why it is funny, why are you drawn into the work, and how you're drawn into the work, and what is the artist really trying to say? So Mark Tansy does this, and um, you may ask yourself, like, well, why is this funny? Like, well, like you may not be la giggling too hard or laughing out loud, but it has a point of humor with it. And it is kind of like a critique of uh, the the museum institution. So you have this big important painting. We're showing it to a cow. Cows can't appreciate art. Well, who is art for? Representation and, and who it's for and how everything is set up for the inspection of the cow is really, it, it's kind of funny. So Duchamp, which I'll post a link to something about him, is they kind of refer to him as like the uh, artist troll. Um, he basically did a lot of stuff critiquing the institution of of, uh, of fine art and what is and what isn't art. And he thought he always wanted to push that. Um, so he's kind of the original troll. I wouldn't say the original, but he's an artist troll. So uh, Cindy Sherman, if you take in photography, you definitely are familiar with her work. So she has these beautiful, gorgeous um, film stills that, you know, sell for so much. They're gorgeous. And so her later work is she's looking at society and, and kind of making a critique of it in sort of these humorous uh, self-portraits. She's also making um, jokes about fine art, but she's placing herself into all these different roles. Oh, who's that? <laughs> so um, I don't rarely talk about my work, but I do use humor um, in my critique of the shifting boundary between girlhood and womanhood. And so um, I like to think another lifetime I'm a stand-up comedian. Uh, but I, I think humor is a good way to entrance it because it's it's something light um, and you're laughing about the absurdity of what's going on but then you uh, you start noticing like why it's you're you think it's kind of funny and then in, in a weird way um, it is kind of sad and that's that's kind of how I approach my work Renee Magritte. Um, so it's kind of, you know, kind of hits the, uh, the joke pretty quick. It's painting a bird, but looking at the egg, it's for the bird, it's about time. Um, maybe by the time he's done with the painting, the, the egg will be a bird. So this is a uh, link, and I will uh, post these two videos coming up. So I, I personally deal a lot with video and photography, and I think video art has a great um, platform for humor in art because it opens up um, 
um, references on, on different types of viewing. So it could be linear narratives, it could be um, storytelling, but also pulling on tropes of uh, of video and film. So we have this uh, link with Hilary Harper, Susie Silver, who uh, take fairy tales and queer them for um, uh, queer, trans, and gender non-conforming audiences. And it's funny, and the way it approaches things is really great and beautiful. Um, they do a lot of great work, and Hilary Harp is a local artist. And then the next link is my favorite artist, which I'll post within Canvas, is Shana Moulton. And she has um, you know, some, some sadness, and it's maybe sort of about her work. And there'll be links to other her work too, but I think there's definitely this great sense of humor to it, but also this nice sense of sadness. And she's exploring things through kind of a humor, humorous lens. So I want you to think um, in the next couple of weeks, just start listening to things that are funny to maybe then open things up, um, trying to find artwork that's funny to look at, think about what people are really trying to say when they're using humor and um, I'm excited for you guys to start this next unit.